In this video, we are going to be taking a look at z-scores. We're going to be converting them into percentiles, and we're going to be answering questions that talk about finding percentiles below, above, and between two z-scores on a normal curve. So what we are going to remind ourselves is that the z-scores themselves are not percentages, but we can use them to find percentages. Now the table that we're going to use, it always goes below or less than the z-score value. So we're going to start off with a very straightforward problem. We're going to imagine a test with 63 out of 100 points for its average. So this is the mu with a standard deviation of 5. So this is my standard deviation or lowercase sigma. So using the z-chart, let's find the probability that a student would be below a 65. So my x is going to belong to the normal distribution. And it's going to have an average of 63 and a standard deviation of 5. So let's over here draw a line down the middle. The middle, very middle, of our normal distribution is our average. Now in blue, I'm going to write down the 63, which happens to be my average. And my target number in this case is a 65. So I'm going to make a flag here and make that, make that flag up to 65, like so. And what I want to do is see how much percent of this graph is to the left or below that flag that I just made. Now, let's do the work. The work is going to be for my z-score formula. I use a line in my z just so it doesn't look like a 2. So the z is equal to x, which is my target, minus the mu divided by the standard deviation. My x in this case is the 65. So I'm going to keep writing as 65 minus my average, which is 63. And then divide by my standard deviation. In this case, the standard deviation is 5. So 65 minus 63 divided by 5 gives me 2 over 5. And I can divide that on my calculator, and I get an answer of 0.4. And 0.4 is my z-score. Now I'm going to change colors here, and I'm going to show you that you didn't have to mark your x-axis in terms of the test scores. You could have labeled your mu a 0, because the average is 0 standard devi deviations away from the average. And this, point 60, this 65, not 0 0.65, this 65 is going to be 0.4 standard deviations away from the norm. Now what's important about that 0.4 is that 0.4 is not, and I repeat, is not a percentage. Because what we are going to do is we're going to find out how much of this graph is actually shaded green. Because what we want is we want the probability that a student will be below a 65. Now if the mu is the 50th percentile, then this shaded region has to be bigger than 50%. So another way that you could mark the x-axis is you could mark it as 50%. So I'm going to do so with the percent symbol so you don't get confused as to what the green numbers represent. The green numbers are the z-scores, the blue numbers are the um, test scores, and these gray numbers are going to be the percent below that area. So anywhere left of mu, or the average, is 50% of the data. So now let's go look at our chart. Our chart, again, we're looking up a z that is 0 0.40. So we're going to go to the positive values. And what's nice is that these values here are going to be pretty straightforward. So let's go to my pen here. So I am looking for 0.4, and 0.4 is here. Now you'll notice that 0.4 didn't have any decimals after it, so technically it's 0.40. So this is my table value I'm going to use to find my percentile. So 0.65542, or I like to round it to three decimal places, 655 thousandths, is going to be the percentile at 0.4 
z-score. So now let's go back to our worksheet here. We have just now went to the table. So from the table, and I want you to, in your notes to write down from table, because sometimes when we look, look back at it later, you may not know where it came from. From table, you got a value of point six five five four two, but again, we're gonna round to three decimal places. Therefore, therefore, 65.5, percent is below 65 on the test. Now it is coincidence that the 65s match, but if we were to fill out the rest of my work here, I would have this as 65.5%. Okay, that is this problem, and it's this most straightforward problem we have. It's basically asking you to take a z-score, convert it into a percentile, and then tell me what that means. And what I wrote here, 65.5% is below 65. That is the percentile. Now let's do another example. Except this is going to change things a little bit because now it's going to do the same problem, except instead of it saying below, it says above. So what I'm going to do is change to a red pen here. And again, we'll mark down that this is, well, I tried to draw a straight line there. Oh, no. All right. Can't let that slide. OK, I'm trying to draw a straight line. <laughs> OK, it's a little better. So this is my mu. And we have did our um, work on the previous page. So again, all of this can match. This is going to be our 0.4. If you wanted to write down, like if this is zero, this is our point four standard deviations away from the norm. Our notation hasn't changed. X belongs to N 63 comma five. Our work is still Z equals 65 minus 63 divided by five. And this equals point four. And if you go to the table, this gives us 0 0.66, or sorry, 655. I put two sixes there. 655. So now you're probably feeling like, okay, I just did all this. Why am I doing the same thing in problem number two? Well, in problem number two, it says using the Z chart, find the probability that the student will be above a 65. Now, above is pretty important because. The table doesn't work that way. The table always works for less than. So when we want to know the shaded area greater than, we just have to add one more step. And that one more step is going to be a subtraction problem. So for above, when you see the word above, and the reason why I have it in quotes is because when you make this mistake on a test and forget to do this step, I will write down the word above to let you know that you made a pretty common mistake. For above, you're going to find the complement. So the table works on below. So this 0.655 is all this area in the white. The complement would be all of the area in purple. And reminding ourselves a little bit, the complement is always 1 minus the probability of the event. And our event probability here is 0.655. So to find the complement, we go 1 minus 0.655. And if we do that simple subtraction, we get 0.345. Therefore, and I'm going to use these three dots. These three dots that look like the holes of a bowling ball is the mathematical way of saying therefore. And the more you use it, the smarter your look, OK? So therefore, whoops, I don't want to run out of screen here. So let me click down just a little bit carefully. Therefore, three, 
34.5% is above 65 points on the test. All right, so that was pretty nice. So what have we learned so far? We've learned that if you need to go below a score, you take your z-score and then convert that to a percentile, no problem. But if you have to go above, you do the same process, but you take the complement of your answer, which means you subtract it from 100%, or you subtract the decimal from 1. So here is our third type of problem. This is using the z-chart. Find the probability that will land within a certain range, let's say 57 to 63. So let us now remind ourselves of the notation. We're still dealing with x belonging to the normal distribution with an average of 63 and a standard deviation of 5. Now, this is looking for the probability that a student will be between 57 and 63. Let's remind ourselves too that this average here, this mu, is going to be 63. Whoops, I almost wrote 65 there. All right, fix that up. So, we're now taking a look at a student being within a certain range. Let's use green here. And so I want to see what is the chance that someone is going to be between 57 and 63. So inside of this region, Oh, come on, don't do this to me here. All right, some of it's back. There we go. Got it all back. All right, so this what for a between problem. So now we're on a between problem. If you have a between problem, you have to actually do two problems. You have to do a problem from the upper bound. So that would be z equals 63 minus 63, come on, divided by 5. And you're also going to do a z from the lower bound, which is 57 minus 63 divided by 5. Okay, so we got two problems to do here. So let's do the top problem. I'll make the top problem red. 63 minus 63 is 0. 0 divided by 5 is 0. So my z-score is 0. Now I'm going to do the bottom problem in green. 57 minus 63 is negative 6 divided by 5. Negative 6 divided by 5 is negative 1.2. So I'm going to look up both of these on the table. Now, a couple of you students out there might realize that zero on the table is really straightforward. Like zero is the middle of the um, bell curve, and the middle of the bell curve is, do you know what? If not, get your table out. The middle of the bell curve is right here in the upper corner. Zero is 50%. So mu is the exact halfway point so if I go back to my um, go back to my picture here, so this z score is zero, and the table value t a b l e table value is going to be 0. 0.5000, and one more o for good measure. Okay, so the table value is 50%. Now let's look up negative 1.2. Okay, if I look up negative 1.2, I realize I'm on the wrong page because these are positive values. So let's go to negative 1.2. Negative 1.20 is this value here at 0 0.11507. So again, this one negative 1.2. O is 11.507, or sorry, 0.11507. So now let's go back to our worksheet here. And in green, let me change this to the table value. 
11507. So, we're almost done with this problem, but what we have to do is we have to find the space between these two with these two table percentiles. To do that, we need to subtract. And it makes sense because if we're going from the middle all the way to the left, and we chop off this white section, which is what we're doing with the subtraction, then we'll get the correct answer. So therefore, you always take the big percentage and subtract the small percentage. Never subtract the z-scores. Just subtract the big percentage from, I'm sorry, and, not from, <laughs> and the small percentage. All right, now if you do that, you get an answer of, and you can go down or across here. It'll give you 384 thousandths, but we're gonna check all the numbers and then do our rounding correctly. So this is 0 0.385 or 385 thousandths, which is 38.5% is between, between our two scores here, uh, which would be 57 and 63. So now you've had an example of above, below, and between, guaranteed to be on the next homework. So what's kind of nice is at the bottom of this um, worksheet here I've made for you is I have a little area chart table. So what do you do if you have a problem that asks for below a z-score? Well, just convert into a percentile and then you're done. That's pretty nice, right? Now, if you ever are asked for above, you're going to do the conversion, but make sure to subtract conversion from the table by one. So subtract that percent conversion by one. Now, the last step here, if it's between a problem that asks you goes in between two numbers, be sure to subtract the big percentage and then the small percentage. Big percentage minus small percentage. Never subtract the z-scores. Convert the z-scores, then subtract the big percentage minus the small percentage. So again, under here, warning, we're going to write this down now. Sometimes I don't know me mentioning it if it causes more problems or not, because sometimes people might actually do the bad thing. But the warning is don't subtract Z scores. Sub subtract their percentages. Okay, and then one last statement. One last statement in giant red ink. Z scores are not percentages. Z scores are not percentages. But what we can do with a Z score is we can turn them into a percentage and figure out what percentile is below that z-score. A z-score tells you how many standard deviations you are away from the norm. A z-score does not, I repeat, does not represent a percentage. So thank you for watching, and you got one more video to go with um, a pretty cool calculator shortcut and some complex mathematics if you don't have technology.